Starting off with number 10, getting the press on her side. The new Queen of England appears to have made a conscious effort to woo the very press that had made her life hell for over a decade. According to royal biographer Juror, she was seen out and about with Charles as soon as she got married. And when people met her, they were surprised by how warm, friendly, and funny she was. She impressed them. On top of that, she was agreeable to the press and accommodating to the paparazzi. They composed cordial things about her and distributed pretty good pictures and slowly the general visibility of her changed. The simple cherishing connection among Camilla and Charles was likewise obvious during their public appearances, a long ways from Charles and Diana's stressed last trips. It is thought that Camilla has transformed Charles, allowing him to be more joyful with her than ever. Number nine, coronation. Queen Camilla solidified her inheritance inside the English royal family when she was crowned alongside King Charles. Although they've been married since 2005, their love story is not exactly a royal fairy tale like those that have been romanticized throughout history. Instead, it has been characterized by a complicated past that began long before Camilla and the new king exchanged wedding vows. The relationship seems to be one of English history's most convoluted and frightening romantic tales, brimming with embarrassment, treachery, and every conceivable kind of unexpected development that at last shook the royal family to its actual core. Christopher Anderson, creator of The Ruler, The Life of Charles III, USA Today reported, Camilla's relationship with Charles as the celebrated justification for his separation from Diana took the imperial boat and she long battled with public acknowledgement. Number eight, control. Diana claimed that Camilla was trying to control Harry and William's lives, taking them on international trips and cutting off their contact with the palace. Diana also accused Camilla of causing a rift between the brothers and said that they had been hurt by her behavior. She believed that Camilla was manipulating Charles to further her own agenda and warned him not to trust her. Diana's comments caused a storm in the media, with many people questioning Camilla's influence over the royal family. In response, Camilla denied all accusations and claimed she was only interested in helping Harry and William succeed in their roles as future kings. She defended herself against any rumors of manipulation or control, saying, I have always respected them both. Prince Charles also spoke out on the issue, stating that he had full confidence in Camilla's ability to help guide his sons. He went on to say that she was a true asset and had his utmost respect, making it clear he would not be taking Diana's advice on this matter. Number seven, unfit for the King of England. Charles and Camilla first met in the 70s and the then Prince fell in love right away after they were introduced by friends. Penny Jur, the royal biographer, wrote in Duchess, the Duchess was not in any way overawed by him, not fawning or sycophantic. Even though they shared a strong bond, Camilla accepted the proposal from Andrew after the Prince was sent off with the Royal Navy in 73. Even if things had turned out well for the two of them, the palace didn't think Camilla would make a good fit for the king because she didn't come from an aristocratic family, which was very important back then. Number six, Notorious Mistress. Diana and Charles brought in Prince William in 82 and Harry in 84, but by 86, Charles had revived his relationship with Camilla. According to Morton and Camilla's biographer, Penny Jur, who described Camilla as the most notorious mistress in the world, both Diana and Andrew Parker were aware of the affair. In 86, Diana also started a series of affairs, one of which was with cavalry officer James Hewitt. During a 1995 interview, Diana confessed that she, she saying, Diana confessed to the issue saying she revered and was enamored with Hewitt, as indicated by Town and Nation magazine. But the relationship ended around 1991. The public of perception, the public perception of Camilla was incredibly negative following Charles and Diana's divorce. Even before the royal divorce, questions lingered about Charles's future relationships as the Church of England did not permit divorced people to remarry so long as their previous spouse was still living. Camilla was also not a suitable candidate due to her divorce. Reporters who covered the royals at the time speculated whether Charles will inflict Camilla on the country as queen, calling it an unwelcome prospect. Number five, 
five phone call transcripts. In the wake of the separation announcement of Diane and Charles, multiple media outlets published the Tampon Gate tape transcript. Some outlets refer to the tape as Camilla Gate in reference to Charles's mistress. Others speculated whether the tape would prevent Charles from someday ascending to the throne. Obviously, it didn't because he is king now. The public was so interested that people could call a phone number to listen to the tape of the actual phone call. Dominic West, who played Prince Charles in season five of The Crown, told Entertainment Weekly. A full transcript of the call depicts Charles and Camilla playing the age-old lover's game of refusing to hang up the phone on one another at the end of the call. Number four, the royal family versus Camilla. Even though Charles and Camilla's relationship was very serious, Camilla was viewed negatively by the royals, but Diana was received, but Diana was received with open arms. Beatle Smith claims that Charles always treated Camilla, who was Charles's age, as an equal rather than an idol from the beginning. However, Camilla was not wanted by the royal family as its princess. She was a no-go for the royal family when it came to finding Charles a wife. It is no secret or surprise that Diana's two sons never truly accepted Camilla once Charles brought her into the family, and although William might be less vocal about his opinion on her, especially as a future king, Prince Harry never held back his feelings about the Queen. Harry explained that after marrying Prince Charles in 2005, Camilla sought a revamp and was dubbed the villain by the British press because of the connections she was making within the British press that made her dangerous. Number three, monarchy's secret weapon. Camilla has also proved herself to be a very hard worker and a secret weapon for a monarchy low on top tier royals available for public service. She is now the patron of more than 90 charities and has a camaraderie with the public few other royals can claim. She's very chatty with the public and makes them feel instantly at ease, often making a joke or just trying to, or making them feel relatable to her. She is also willing to get her hands dirty. In November 2021, Catherine Johnstone, commander of the Order of the British Empire, and Chief Executive of Royal Voluntary Services told Hello about a time Camilla was serving meals at one of its lunch diners and immediately started cutting up a meal without hesitation for one of the older diners who had sight issues. I'm not gonna lie, that actually does sound pretty nice of her. Maybe she is gonna be a good Queen of England? I don't know, thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Camilla's choice of patronages has also shown her not to be the blithe country gal she often seemed to be. She has highlighted the often taboo subjects of domestic violence violence and assault. Number two, drinking problem. Charles is said to be on high alert regarding Camilla's drinking issues, which have gotten him into a lot of trouble. Charles had already persuaded his mother not to push him aside in favor of his son William and Kate, and began by describing some trust issues that exist between Charles and Camilla. Camilla was not satisfied with the title of Princess Consort, which Charles had promised to her when they got married in 2005. She has also aspired to be queen. Her majesty did not approve until Charles allegedly pulled out his ace card, which we still don't know what it is. Any thoughts? Let me know in the comments. This put Charles on red alert about Camilla's excessive drinking. Before coming to a conclusion, the informant also stated he knows Camilla is a loose cannon who's fallen off the wagon many times before and caused him untold embarrassment. And finally, number one, blindsided princes. It is said that William and Harry were blindsided by their late grandmother's decision to approve of her title as Queen Consort. According to Christopher Anderson, a royal expert and author, the decision was driving a wedge within the royal family. Here's hoping that everyone got over it. And although it is said that William and Harry are now friends with Camilla, Prince Charles, their father, has a long history of having an affair with her in the 80s and 90s while he was still married to their mother, Princess Diana. In the end, Charles and Diana split up in 92 and Camilla and Charles tied the knot in 2005. According to Anderson, who spoke with a publication, she was begrudgingly letting him do this and one of the key elements was he promised Camilla would never be called Queen Consort. Her Majesty was miserable during Charles's second marriage ceremony. He says the late queen was skeptical about Camilla when she married Charles and the circumstances were certainly challenging. After the Queen's longtime husband and consort, Prince Philip, passed away in April, Anderson claims Charles was relentlessly pushing for Camilla to become Queen Consort. That is all for today though. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more news on your favorite celebrities and juicy royal updates. And I'll catch you next time on The Rich Life.